This is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing another contract here signed by the Sharks as they lock up what is likely their last major restricted free agent. If you don't count Gambrell and Suomela as major restricted free agents, that would be Kevin LeBanc as he signs a one year deal worth $1 million. Just an absolutely insane steal of a contract for the San Jose Sharks. And I don't know why LeBanc, and I guess by extension, LeBanc's agent would have signed a contract like this likely the bank's agent should find himself out of a job in this scenario after signing a contract like this because everyone knew LeBanc was going to likely get a bridge deal whether or not that was going to be two three years uh, I'm not uh, hugely surprised that it ended up being just a single year this obviously is sort of like a prove it deal for Kevin LeBanc the Sharks have done similar things in the past for instance Chris Tierney got less than a million dollars I believe on a deal a couple years back uh, that was supposed to be a proven deal, but there was a big difference between Tierney's performance in that season that led up to that one-year deal compared to LeBanc's performance. LeBanc put up over 50 points, was extremely effective on the power play, he was okay at even strength, and I know he wasn't playing in the top six, but at the very least, if he was going to sign a one-year deal, he should have been able to get like a good two and a half to three million dollars if not more than that and I I can't imagine that there weren't some GMs from other teams who were maybe knocking at his door trying to give him an offer sheet even something like four or five years at something like four plus million dollars I feel like a team desperate enough would have likely decided to offer him that and you know when it comes to someone like Joe Thornton if Thornton signs for one year one million dollars for someone who got 50 points it wouldn't really surprise me as much because obviously Thornton's played over 20 years in the NHL has likely made over over a hundred million dollars just from doing that and so you know pay it forward to the San Jose Sharks I guess by giving a nice uh, team-friendly deal but LeBanc this is his first contract contract off of his entry-level deal he doesn't really owe anything to the Sharks and yet he gets a lot less than he was worth at this point in his career he could have signed two years at likely like three million a year he could have signed maybe three years at a similar amount or even just a one-year deal at a similar amount but he ends up going with the one-year deal and one million dollars so as i said this is a heavy bet on what exactly he could do next season even if he could have easily gotten more than that but LeBanc is likely going to be in a top six role for the Sharks, even if they somehow manage to scrounge up the funds to sign another top six forward. They actually have two holes if you exclude LeBanc, and so he'll find himself with someone like Meyer and Couture or Kane and Hurdle. And so if he can put up a fantastic performance, if he can continue to get 50 points, maybe even 60 points, if he can get a bit better at even strength and a bit better defensively and take maybe a few less penalties that are ill-advised in the offensive zone and things like that, then LeBanc, LeBanc can likely get a long-term deal similar to Meyer at like five or maybe even six million dollars. But it just seems like such a strange, uh, you know, uh, dollar amount to actually sign at when you easily could have gotten a lot more. You know, the Sharks are certainly thanking him. And I, as a Sharks fan who want the Sharks to fit everything under the cap, I'm certainly thanking him. But if, you know, I'm LeBanc, I'd be pretty upset if I'm only getting $1 million for a single year when I could have likely gotten a bit more than that. But now how the Sharks lineup is shaping up, as I said, they still have a hole in their top six. Meyer and Couture would be playing with basically nobody as uh, Kane, Hurdle, and LeBanc would make up the second line. Sorensen is has two holes as well then Carlson Goodrow and Radil of the players signed of course you know Gambrell could potentially fill in for Radil but he's not yet signed on the defense Shemek Burns Vlasic Carlson Dylan Heed this has been set for a, a while now as well as Jones and Dell in goaltending so the Sharks now with just about 5.4 million dollars in terms of cap space according to uh, uh, cap friendly of course this is including the fact that the Sharks would have seven defensemen up with them so Dalton Prout's contract is included in this as well as likely 13 forwards will be up as well now on the side here, I do have Thornton and Marlowe as likely signings from the Sharks, as I still believe these two will end up being in teal for the next season. They will probably take both spots on the third line with Marcus Sorensen. As such, the Sharks will only have a single spot to take up on that top line, and it'll be interesting to see what the contracts for both Thornton and Marlowe end up being. Uh, you know, if they can make it a combined $2.4 million and maybe they could have $3 million left, I have a couple of options here. Ryan Dezingle, I... I assume he was probably aiming to get a lot more money than he uh, 
than he probably deserved because he had a very good year with Ottawa, but he wasn't great with Columbus, especially in the playoffs, which is probably has a lot of teams hesitating, especially since this was a massive career year for Dezingle. So if he wants to go maybe one a one-year deal with someone like the Sharks, give him a good chance at winning it all and everything like that and just take like two and a half to three million dollars, it's a possibility. The same goes with Furland. I feel Furland thought he was going to be worth a lot more than teams were willing to give him. So he has a similar option. And then potentially Potentially Thomas Vanek. Vanek is of course very old, but he's certainly no stranger to one year con well, very old. He's what 35 or 36 now. He's certainly no stranger to one year contract. He's not the best player defensively, but he has some offensive skills still left. So if the Sharks can't find anything else, and if they don't trust a prospect like Shemilevsky or Chekovic to come up and play in that top six right away, they could potentially make a move for Vanek. Of course, they could also just leave the cap space open, maybe potentially opening up a space for a trade deadline maneuver, and then try with the prospect early. There's a lot of options here with Doug for Doug Wilson now that LeBanc has signed for such a little deal of just one million dollars for a single year. So in the end, the Sharks did lose Pavelski in this offseason, but Wilson signs Carlson. He got great deals for both Meyer and LeBanc, so it ended up being a decent offseason for the Sharks as it soon really comes to a conclusion and we start looking forward to next year as soon as a couple more uh, you know blocks fall into place. Class dismissed.